What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Shop Talk Tuesday. So in this video, what we're going to be talking about is for one, the giveaway knife. Uh, I'm going to be using this as a reference for some of the things that I'm going to explain today. Now we're not going to be grinding in the bevels for this knife because I need to sh use it to show y'all what I'm talking about whenever I'm talking about things like Ricasso, plunge lines, finger choil, all of those different things. Um, I'm going to be giving y'all some of the rundown on uh, decisions that I make in my knife designing slash making process um, and you know break it down a little bit and tell you why I do the things that I do. So what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to point you down at the mat here. We're going to give you a little close up of this and I'm going to start explaining some of those things so that y'all kind of can wrap your head around how Eric Rivers designs knives that he makes. And in particular, some of the stuff that I'm gonna be doing to this one. So let's jump down here, let's check it out. So I've got a few reference things here that I'm gonna talk about as well during this, but we're gonna start off by talking about the handle because I'm primarily gonna be focused on this area, but I need to talk about this to get into this. So you'll see that I already have some lines drawn on here. When it comes to me deciding how I'm going to, you know, design my handle, where it's going to end, all those things, I'm going to get into more depth whenever we actually get to the handle making process. But this line plays a pl pretty important role to the Ricasso size, to the plunge line uh, design, to a lot of different things that I design the blade with. So for this, I wanted a handle that fit my hand all the way. I wanted it to where my finger came all the way up to the finger choil area, right where that handle is going to start. And it's going to give you a good grip, but not be too crazy. I see people design their knives to where their handle comes almost all the way up and there's almost no Ricasso area. So their handle will cover this whole entire finger choil area and that's kind of adding weight that's not necessary especially on a knife that is this thick right here because I'm gonna have plenty of material to keep my hand from sliding forward it's still gonna be a very comfortable knife and my handle is really meant to make this area of my hand feel comfortable that's the whole point behind it so that it indexes in your hand right so whenever I design everything, it's all about ergonomics and indexing so that no matter what, whenever you pick up this handle, even if you don't have any visibility or vision or anything like that, say you're blinded or something, you could pick up this knife and it's not going to be indexed like this, like this, like this. It's going to always go to this direction so you know which way is the cutting edge. Okay, so this area plays a lot of uh, importance when it comes to my Ricasso designs and these plunge line designs and all of that because for a knife like this that is forged I like to actually leave the forged area on the Ricasso and then up top of the knife now there's a couple of reasons why I'm leaving this to where you actually have some flat here and one of the big reasons is because this knife is built to where it can be used to strike a ferro rod and throw sparks real well. So it's got a 90 degree spine on it. So 90 degrees from where the flats meet the spine and meet the flats again. Uh, it throws sparks real well whenever you do that with a high carbon knife. Something like this ADCRV2 that we have here. Now this uh, Ricasso area and everything, that is an important thing for me because if I do a texture knife, something like this right here I like seeing all the texture throughout there and you can see here it has the handle which where it ends right there right where my index finger is we're gonna talk about this knife a couple of times but that right there plays a large role like I said in how I design the knives what I'm thinking through here but it also this part of the handle plays a role in the angle of my plunge line because I tend to mimic these things on most of my knives. You can see here, mimicked to where the angle with the angle, here, angle, angle, just like that. 
Uh, it's a personal preference. You do not have to do that. I've got other knives that I've designed to where they don't work that way, to where they have a flat area. So like my Rivolette, where this is angled and this is flat. And that's just because of the more traditional style knives and everything. A lot of them have these 90 degree plunge lines. So you have that. But, like I said, this line plays a huge role in the angle of my plunge line there. Other than aesthetics, there's not a real reason behind the plunge line being shaped how it is or angled like it is. It'd be perfectly fine if it was straight up and went across or angled like this. There's no real benefit to it or anything like that. It's just a personal preference with aesthetics. I do not go off of any particular angle or anything like that. Whenever I'm explaining my knives, you're going to really <laughs> hear the fact that I don't rely on measurements for a lot of things. A lot of my stuff is by feel, by eyesight, by looks, and how this thing is meant to uh, react to what you're going to be putting it through. So there is the Ricasso area. The size of this is really uh, changed depending on uh, if I want texture here or not. Some of my Ricassos are a lot smaller than this. Uh, not many of them are larger. This is one of the larger Ricassos that I do. Uh, but there's no real benefit to decreasing or increasing this on a knife like this. It's just personal preference. Now, when it gets to the bevels and the height in which I decide to do my bevels, a lot of that is based on a couple of things. One being the design that I've put into it. So if I've done something like this where I have textured it, of course, I want to show off that texture, so I'm going to have a little bit more flats than some of the other knives. But on knives that are going to be used for, you know, chef's knives and things like that, I'll typically bring those bevels all the way up and have a full flat grind as opposed to part of the way up. Um, but something like this, I am bringing it really close to the top. We are still going to have a 90 degree spawn for this whole length of the blade right here all the way up to here but i am going to bring the bevels up pretty high because i want this blade to lose some of its weight that's one of the reasons why i have a distal taper going through the blade because i want to lose a lot of the weight in this right here we've got a kind of a thick spine but i am going to be drilling holes to lighten the handle we're going to be taking a lot of material off to lighten the blade so that this becomes more of a wieldable uh, knife that doesn't weigh down your pack. The point behind this particular build is to be an all-around knife so you're going to be able to take this hunting, camping, uh, EDC it if you want to but we are going to bring the bevels up a little bit higher. I am making the bevels uh, this top flat line is just going to be a nice sweep up. It's not going to follow the recurve. You can see something like this right here, where these flats follow this recurve. It drops down, it's larger right here than it is back here. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make it to where it just has a nice sweep up. So you got a nice big bevel going out throughout here. So if you need to skin with this, you can. But that's the, whenever I design my bevels, a lot of it is going to be based on, are you planning on batoning this? Are you planning on dicing, slicing, skinning? Like I said, batoning. Uh, what is the primary use? This is going to be an all-around knife, so that is why I'm designing the bevels the way I am. So that when it comes down to the edge, I can have a little bit finer of an edge and thinner edge than what I would do on something like a chopper, where this is going to have a thicker edge and a more drastic bevel. You know, this is a quarter of an inch thick, but this is meant to be a chopper. It's got more of an edge geometry of something like a hatchet. Uh, even though it still slices real easily, it is built to be, like I said, a chopper and not so much a slicer. But I am going to be mimicking something closer to the edge that's on this because these are about the same thickness or they're going to be about the same thickness when it's all said and done uh, so this will have a closer edge geometry to something like this it's going to have really good edge retention 
you'll be able to chop with it just like this can. I've chopped through 2x4s, logs, everything with this, and then still shaved afterwards. But it's going to have more of the edge geometry like this, uh, which is a little bit thinner. You know, you can have a nice thinner chopper like this without having to go with something as thick as like this quarter inch one right here. So it'll have a thinner edge geometry, but still something that can withstand chomping and batoning if necessary. But I want the person, if they want to be able to skin with this, they can. So I want it to have a little bit more finer of an edge, but still have real good edge retention. So the bevels play a big part in that because if you have a crazy steep bevel, something like a Scandi grind, it's going to end up making it to where your edge geometry can only be one way. So I don't want that. I'm going to do a higher bevel, a little bit thinner of an edge, and the edge geometry is going to be a little bit different here versus here versus here. And you can do that if you're doing a lot of this stuff by eye versus by measurement. I don't use my calipers to really sit there and measure my edge and get to the thousandths of the inch and all that stuff like some knife makers do. A lot of my stuff is based on what I've done in the past, what makes sense, and stuff like this where the edge geometry is different here on this blade than it is here and than it is here so that it has a little bit thicker of an edge to stab through things and pierce. It's got a little bit of a different edge here for chopping. It's got a little bit of a finer edge here for cutting ropes, slicing, doing things like that. I like the recurves as something that you're going to carry every day because if you need to cut a hose or a rope, this recurve indexes everything to the center of it and lets you slice through. So you're not trying to find that area and slice through it. All you got to do is just get there, boom, slice it, pop it, do whatever you got to do. You can do that and it will lock in with that recurve right there. And then we'll have a little bit broader of a belly so that you can skin and do things like that. Nice broader tip just in case you got a puncture or stab or defend so that you're not having to worry about bending your tip, deforming your tip or breaking your tip off. You know, so that's bevels and what I think through whenever I'm doing that and how I thought through with this right here, plus a little bit on edge geometry. Now, whenever I am doing edges on stuff like this, and I'm thinking about the edge geometry, it is based on, again, my history with knives and what I've seen that works and what I've seen that has not worked with both EDCs, with skinners, with choppers, with slicers, with, you know, hunting and camping knives and all that just making sure that you have a nice consistent knife now you do not have to have some thick knife for a camp knife uh, or an EDC or a hunting knife you can go down to something that's an eighth of an inch thick there are plenty of knives out there uh, like I use a rat 3 it's got a, a thinner spine to it but I've used it to baton through wood and everything like that it's worked well uh, but for me with this one I had a particular thought in mind with how I wanted to do that distal taper all the way through to the tip so I made the handle a little bit wider and then I am going to lighten that handle up but again sorry back to edge geometry so whenever I'm thinking through something like this knife right here again I want to have something similar to this knife right here for an all-around knife that can withstand a lot of different abuses but that is the, the the point behind here and again I'm not measuring anything it's gonna be I am gonna find the center line so I know how far to not go past so that I don't cross over and make my blade my cutting edge a little bit too far to the left or the right I don't use that center line as what I plan on going to or what I'm going to grind to I'm gonna use that center line to make sure that I don't grind past or past as I'm doing it but a lot of my geometry comes from me looking at it going okay maybe I need to pull this in a little bit more here or I need to move this one out a little bit more here or thin this out a little bit more as I'm going through and I'm starting to see how the blade is turning out that's where I start deciding on a lot of my different uh, edge geometries and the thickness of my where my bevels are going to come to before I do my secondary bevel so it's you know kind of interesting how that works out now I do want to mention one thing when I'm talking about 
bevels. So primary bevel is this broad one right here, the larger one. Secondary bevel is that little shiny edge that you see right there. There's going to be some blades that are going to have no secondary bevel, like my chef's knives and stuff like that. But for a lot of these, they have a secondary bevel. A lot of them will have a sharpening choil. And the big point behind that is I want people to be able to field sharpen those. Uh, you can field sharpen a chef's knife, but it's not going to have real good edge retention with chopping and you know cutting wood and stuff like that but on a lot of my knives that are like this they're going to have a secondary bevel and that way you're not worried about messing it up if you got to sharpen it on a sharpening stone or something cheap while you're out and about you're not worried about screwing up that edge geometry so a little bit more forgiving but this one will have a secondary bevel all the way down it but it'll have a little bit finer of an edge so that secondary bevel is not very pronounced, just like this one right here. So that's a few of the things that I think through whenever I am making a knife. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the camera up and I'm going to talk to you all a little bit more about this and a couple other things. So let's go ahead and bring you all up top. So now if, if you all were looking for a bunch of measurements on how I design things and what I measure where and you know bringing out the the calipers and you know measuring devices and all that I want y'all to understand something I primarily use this six inch clear ruler and this set of calipers and again these right here don't even have a battery in it I don't use it for that these are primarily for scribing I'll do a little bit of measurements with just the the numbers that are on here that's that's about it <laughs> and uh, I don't go to the thousands or anything like that a lot of what I do is again by eye and seeing what I might need to adjust and change and what feels right what looks right uh, for what the intended purpose of that is gonna be <laughs> is that for everybody no if you need to rely on measuring devices I say 100% do it if you prefer to do that, because a lot of people want to geek out on that stuff. They want to get, you know, super into the, the measurements and things like that because it's a whole aspect of knife making that's, that's pretty awesome. I think you should absolutely do that because be precise. Do all of those cool things. You know, for me personally, that's not really what I do. Uh, a lot of my stuff is based on, again, the 20 plus years of me, you know, owning knives, collecting knives, using knives, using things like hatchets and things like that. Um, I based the edge geometry for this knife on that axe right there. I've had that axe for about 13 years. It's been sharpened a lot. Uh, right now, you can shave with that thing. And uh, I keep it sharp because I use it very often. I trim branches for myself, my neighbors, all that stuff. And that right there will slice through little limbs and things like that with very 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 easily um, so I, I thought through all of that whenever I'm making my knives you know uh, chef's knives that I've used hunting knives camping knives axes hatchets all those things and I put a lot of that into my knife making to make sure that I am utilizing an edge geometry that I've used in my life and understood uh, what holds an edge for a long time because you've got to think through not just your heat treat you gotta have the right edge for that particular knife because if you put this crazy razor sharp edge on a particular steel that can only get so, or so sharp and only retain a certain edge then if you put the wrong edge on that you're not doing any justice you need to know you know what steels can hold a finer edge what steels like a broader edge um, because there are those things and factors that you got to think through. Uh, it's not just your heat treat, it's not just your edge geometry, it's not just your handle shape, it's all of those things. If you have a freaking knife that has an amazing heat treat but a horrible handle and a horrible edge, I mean you basically got a real cool hardened stick. Uh, if you've got a knife that has a great edge and a great handle but horrible heat treat, well you got a sharp thing that's going to break. Uh, if you've got a knife that has a great heat treat and a great edge geometry, a horrible handle, that's a knife that no one will use because it's not comfortable to hold. 
you got to have all of that. You got to have ergonomics. You got to have the right edge geometry. You got to have the right heat treat. So it's a process to think through. But until you go through and do all the heat treats, I've got a whole stack of steel over here of knives that I've heat treated, snapped, of pieces of steel that I've heat treated and snapped, um, that I've sacrificed because I wanted to make sure heat treats were right, grain structures were right, um, all of those things because, again, if you sacrifice one of those steps because you think it's all right, that's horrible. You know, if you're going to put your name on something, especially something that might last longer than you, that's what your life's based on. Whenever they see that thing, oh yeah, so-and-so made that. Wow. Uh, you want them to go, so-and-so made that, and it's amazing. So-and-so made that, and you should own one of those. You have to own one of those. Those things last forever. That's what I go for whenever I make my knives. <laughs> but it's all about making sure you do the whole process and not just one part of the process. But, guys, hopefully y'all are excited about this. Again, I didn't want to do the bevels in this video because I wanted to be able to point at things while I'm talking. I know a lot of that was you looking at my hands and looking at the knife, and I'm not exactly a hand model, but uh, hopefully y'all got some insight into what I was talking about here um, on the next video. So next week, Shop Talk Tuesday, we'll go ahead and grind in the bevels so that y'all can actually uh, see the belt progression that I do. Uh, we'll talk about, uh, you know, flat platens. We'll talk about uh you know contact wheels and things like that when we do that video but guys be on the lookout for the next one i know that most of the guys that watch these videos the, the shop talk tuesdays are the same people that watch every single week i really appreciate y'all um and the next one we'll do a, a viewer's knife submission uh, i didn't want this video to uh run super long but guys just want to thank y'all again for coming by and watching this hopefully y'all are excited about the giveaway knife and guys if you haven't yet, thumbs up, share the video or one of my other videos, and make sure you subscribe if you've got to this point and you're not a subscriber. You should definitely subscribe because we have an awesome Kumai build that we're working on right now. You should definitely go check out that video. It's going to be at the end cards of this video. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. I hope y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there, and I will catch y'all next time. Mm -hmm.